play or chemistry with his son? And, or what's in his way right now? Well, I, I think it's the same thing that's it, in the whole team's way is it's a little bit of chemistry. It's a little bit of um, people relishing their roles on their team. That's not so much for Pasta. He knows what his role is. Um, but, you know, uh, if you look at the course of our season, like we, we look disjointed at times. We're starting to trend the right way. Um, but a lot of that comes down to those things. Well, to me, in the middle of last week, after the 82 loss, a lot of talk on social media about your future with the Bruins. Do you hear any of that noise at all? And if you do, how do you kind of focus on what you're going to push that out? Well, uh, the way I deal with it is there's a great poem. It's called uh, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. And it's a lot of what I believe in the process of our team is you only control the present. And if you worry about the past and dwell on the past, it brings up anxiety or worry or contentment, depending on what you're thinking about. If you worry about the future, which you don't control, well, then you're really going to have anxiety. So uh, that's where my mindset goes. And, you know, with the struggles I've had personally, that poem really reinforced what I need to worry about, which is the next 24 hours. And that's the way I live my life. Then after this weekend, rattle off back to back shots. A little bit validating to see, okay, this brand works. We know. Uh, I'm not there yet with that. Um, just being honest, there's too many lapses in our game right now where uh, we're not a 60 minute team, um, and we just need to continue to build up. We're better, but we're not where we need to be. Last night, the guys talked about Pasta being vocal and supportive and sort of into it in the third period, even though he wasn't on the ice. How much do you like as a coach just to see that response from one of your leaders in that particular situation? Yeah, he was incredible. You know, very vocal, picking up players at the last 15 seconds, talking about what a great team win this is. I said this since the beginning. I've said it numerous times. I'm really lucky to work with the leaders I get to work with. I'm very fortunate. In other places, like you've seen coaches that, you know, it's, it's a big problem. And I'm lucky with the accountability that exists in this culture and the leaders that I get to deal with, because that allows me to hold everybody accountable. In your group video sessions, when you see things that need to be corrected, do you make it a point to include clips that show players doing things like like, or do you have to play it straight and say, this is where the deficiencies are? No, yeah, I think you have to do both. And, um, and it just depends on the timing. Uh, like yesterday, we showed clips. It was all, it was eight, like eight clips. Four of our puck pressure, all positive. Four of us playing north and being connected offensively and defensively. You know, because before a game, when you don't have a lot of time, players need to be, you need to get to set them in. This is the image you want. Now, a day, you have a couple of days between games. Now you're going to show a couple of teaching clips. But you always, I always follow it up with a positive. This is what it should look like. I know you said you're still trying to work on chemistry between the lines, but... They're getting better. I like the lines the last two games. The current configuration, the current configuration is pretty good. It, it, uh, I see three lines really developing chemistry. I see a fourth line starting to come. You know, l lacking a little bit of identity. Um, but the way it flows, the lines flow as far as coming out of power play, back to five on five, coming out of penalty kill, everything that way, it's for me as a coach, it's, it's a lot more fluid.